ahead and turn to Revelation chapter 3, and um, we're still in our series talking about a reset for open doors, and I, I just so appreciate the worship today. I needed that so bad. I was like, man, just needed that so bad. So thank you so much for, for that worship. Um, and so we're, we're really in this series about God bringing a great reset in the church, and we've looked at several different things God wants to do, and and this, and this message, it's about open doors. And so in, the, in your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn to Revelation chapter 3. And uh, it, what I'm going to talk about today has really been for us in our prophetic journey as a church and as a ministry. It's been for us what God has been speaking so often. That, And I'm going to summarize it here with the statement that if we would open the door of our hearts to Jesus and we would open the, if we would overcome apathy and lukewarmness and being asleep and open the door of our hearts to Jesus, he would come in and dine with us. And as we experience that dining relationship with Jesus, then he would open the door into the glory realm of God, into a holy of holies place of worship. I think we had a taste of that today in our worship time, just a taste because there is infinitely more that God wants to give us. And that he would then open the door for ministry into this community, into the nation and into the nations of the earth. And we would have a ministry with what he said to the church of Philadelphia with a little power. And when, the God, when God says a little power, that means to us it's a lot of power. But God would give us power to be a witness. And I'm going to talk about that next Sunday. But um, God wants to give us power to be a witness. And God wants us, as this, this message has been unfolding since 2006. And so what I'm going to do in this message is kind of go through the prophetic history of how often God has been speaking that to us so that we can understand, go deeper and say, oh, okay, God is, not, uh, God is not changing his mind. This invitation is still open to us. It, it, in, fact, in fact, I believe we barely have even stepped into that. Now, that, that is not meant to make us feel bad. That mean, is mean to say, okay, there is so much more we can have and we can experience. I mean, we can have way more than what we just had in worship. The glory realm of God is essential for the hour of history that we live in. I told you to turn to Revelation 3, but let's actually turn to Isaiah 60. I want us to get a, an understanding here of the times we live in, because the times we live in are very unique. I, I believe it's, you know, as sometimes as hard as it is to live in the times we live in, the pressure we are experiencing, the warfare, the upheaval, the, the craziness, like Drew was singing about, the insanity of nations which, by the way, we are seeing the insanity of nations, wouldn't you agree? God says, I want you to hear this, um, the Lord speaks this over Israel, but I believe he also speaks this over the church. So I want you to receive what the prophetic proclamation of the Lord is over us in this time. He says, he says to us, he says to you, he says to me, hear the Lord speak to you. Arise and shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I want to tell you the greatest hour of the outpouring of God's glory is upon us. And I'm going to share that in this message. But the glory of God is coming to the end time church. And I'm telling you, that's awesome news, somewhat terrifying news if you know God. You can't get away with much if his glory is poured out. You can't just live casually if his glory is poured out. But I want us to see arise and shine for, your, for the, your light has come. The glory of God has risen upon you. Amen. The glory of God is going to increase substantially in the, in the day that we live in. Now notice what he says, verse 2. Behold, darkness will cover the earth. I think we're seeing that, aren't we? 
the, the craziness that's going, the craziness that's unfolding, it's not only the darkness of evil, sinful people, the endemic nature that has not been redeemed, the corruption of Adam that is being multiplied, it's not only that, but it's also the enemy knows the hour is late and he is enraged. And so we're encountering both the corrupt, fallen nature of man and the rage of Satan because he knows his hour is late. So these two factors combined are, are causing darkness to cover the earth and deep darkness to people. This is the best of times and the worst of times we're living in. This is the harvest, which is the end of the age, that is both the maturing of God's people, the maturing of the righteous sons of God, and the maturing of the evil, wicked ones. We're living in both of those times, but today I want us to focus on the Lord will arise upon you. Receive that right now as a prophetic declaration over you. The Lord will arise upon you. The certainty of that. There's no if, there's no condition. The Lord will rise upon you. That is good news. Though we are, we are an earthen vessel, I feel, like, I feel like this week or this past few weeks, I've seen more and more the earthenness of this vessel that I am, and, but the treasure that is also in me. We carry within us in this earthen vessel a glorious treasure called Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. The glory of God is in you because of Christ. It doesn't matter. I mean, the outer man is decaying. The outer man is, like it says, the outer man is decaying, especially when you start getting over about 40. You start feeling a little more of that decay setting in. If you're under 40, you're like, what is he talking about? Trust me, you'll experience it. But when you're about over 40, you start feeling the decay of the outer man, right? All the younger people are going, I don't really know what you're talking about. And the older people are like, amen, preach it, brother. But you start also feeling or experiencing the glory of the treasure that is in you. We carry this treasure in earthen vessels that the power of God would be of him and not of ourselves. God help us sometimes, right? We're our own worst enemy. But here's what the Lord is saying it is a declaration. The Lord will arise upon you. And I want to say it to Restoration Life, to us. I'm telling you, the Lord has been speaking to us, as we're going to see, for 15 years. 15 years he's been trying to say something to us. We are kind of got it, but we kind of don't got it yet. That's not really good English, but God is speaking to us. The, this is, listen, this is the word of the Lord to Restoration Life. The Lord will arise upon you. You are meant, we are meant to be vessels of glory at the end of the age. We are meant to be a corporate gathering of living stones in whom the glory of God dwells here at the end of the age. We have yet to fully enter into that realm of glory, but I, I am very confident we will. The, the Lord's glory will rise upon you. His glory will appear upon you. So with that declaration in mind, what I want us to do is I want to give an overview. Now you can go back to Revelation chapter 3. I want to give an overview of of what God has been speaking to us for about 15 years in terms of a prophetic history. And I think when you see all the pieces of the puzzle put together and you see, okay, the, the common thread of what God has been speaking through dreams, visions, experiences, messages, uh, prophetic words, all this stuff. It is amazing what God's been speaking to us. And I think we kind of need to wake up and be like, wow, okay, God's saying something here. And in, in, in hearing what he's saying, respond appropriately so we can enter in fully to what God wants. Amen. So Revelation chapter 3 is 
This is, what I'm going to do is summarize for us from these scriptures, what God has been unfolding and speaking over since about 2006, is in Revelation chapter 3, the Lord speaks to the church of Sardis, and he says that you have a name, verse, verse what, 1, he says, I know your deeds, I know your works, you have a name that you're alive, but you are dead. Now, I don't really feel like God's speaking that right now to us, but in the past he certainly was. The idea that you have a reputation for being alive. You have a reputation for being a forerunner church. You have a reputation for this or that. And even, even all that God's doing through Life School in Africa, thousands of pastors are getting trained and thousands of people are getting equipped. And God was speaking to us back, back then that your reputation's here, your actuality is here, close the gap. Remember that? So... I don't believe, I believe that, that a lot has been accomplished in that closing of the gap, but I believe verse 2, what God is wanting to stir afresh for us here, is he wants to say uh, yet again, wake up and strengthen the things that remain. And I believe that the Lord is speaking to us, your deeds are not yet completed in the sight of God. And he's speaking to us as a corporate body, just like he was speaking to the church of Sardis. Now, you, people can read that and say, oh, God, he's mad at us. God, no, God's, you know, displeased with us. No, that's not what he's saying. It's more of like this. Your vision is way too small. What God wants to do through us, what God wants to do in this place, is way bigger than you could ever ask, think, or imagine. See, our thinking is way too small. We have limited ourselves. We have cast the mold for ourselves, even that prophetic word I was sharing earlier. And we said, God, we've limited God by our small thinking. And God saying, I believe the Lord saying to us, there is, there is exceedingly more for you to accomplish restoration life as a body. As a body. And so I believe the Lord is saying to us, your vision is not too big. Your vision is too small. Now, don't receive that as like God's mad at me. God's just saying, I believe the Lord's sensing or the sensing of the Lord to us is expand the vision and see it multiplied here in this community, multiplied in this nation, multiplied in the nations of the earth. And we've seen some incredible fruit in life school. By what, I don't know, over, probably over 5,000 pastors have been trained, probably 250,000 people have been impacted. And now the Lord's like, that's nothing. Now, I, I, I'm not trying to make us again feel, but I'm, I feel like the Lord's saying, your deeds have not been completed. The, the, the vision is transgenerational. This vision needs to be multiplied into the generations to come of all that God wants to do, all that God wants to say. Your vision is too small. It needs to expand. It needs to get bigger because God is saying, I believe you have not completed the deeds I have for you as a corporate body. Amen? So that's, not, again, that's not a rebuke. It's the Lord encouraging us. There's far more for us to accomplish. That's kind of been uh, a, a theme that we've had here. Now, we go to Philadelphia and in, in, in chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord says, he who is holy, he who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut and shut so no one opens, says this, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power and you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. The Lord is speaking to us about open doors. In fact, if you look up the word door in the book of Revelation, when it's used, it's used here to the church of Philadelphia, an open door for the accomplishment of ministry, an open door for the opening of our hearts to Jesus to experience intimacy, and the open door into glory to experience throne room worship. And I believe what uh, the Lord is giving us and has been giving us for 15 years is a blueprint of how we are to accomplish the big, really big vision God has given us. It begins with 
if we will open the door of our heart to Jesus by overcoming lukewarmness and apathy and indifference, then he will come into us and bring us into this dining, intimate experience with him in your inner man, in your spirit. You are called to dine with Jesus. You are called into a communion with Jesus deep in the secret place, deep in that place of intimacy. But what hinders us so often is lukewarmness. What hinders us so often is a lack of desire, a lack of hunger, a lack of thirst. And I said it in one of the messages. I said, the measure of Christ you have is the measure of Christ you want. Paul said we could have unlimited measures of Christ, but that measure that we currently have is actually the measure we want, revealing that God moves based on our hunger and our desire, showing us then what hinders us from that deep, intimate, secret place, dining, communing relationship with Jesus is that we're not hungry enough and we're not thirsty enough. And that's been an issue. It's a, I, you know, listen, don't get discouraged by this. It is an issue in the American church. And every, I, I doubt very seriously God wouldn't say that to any church in America. Every church in America, even including International House of Prayer, they, they spend their lives praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and even the Lord has been confronting them on their lukewarmness, all right? So it's not like we're, we're you know, we, we're, what, you know we're, I'll never measure up or whatever. No, God is, this, this, the, the confrontation of lukewarmness is because he wants to bring us into this continuous conversation <laughs> with him, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful. I'm telling you, it's real. I, I begin to taste of it some. There's nothing like it. It, it is addictive. It is, I mean, it is incredible. It, and, and it all begins right here in our inner man. We're not just going, we don't have to go here and there or whatever and read this book or that, but God might lead us to do that. But I want to awaken you to this fact that Christ lives inside of you. And if Christ lives inside of you, you are the holy of holies of God's temple. And if you are the holy of holy of God's temple, you can have an intimate, internal relationship with him in that holy of holies. That is awesome. And so God wants to bring us into this relationship with him. In fact, I've kind of gotten into... Uh, Laodicea here, and you know we we were very familiar with this. Because, uh, verse sixteen, because you are lukewarm and not and neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And then he goes down and in, in in verse twenty he says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." This is not an invitation to evangelism. It's because Jesus Christ is out on the outside knocking to get in. He wants you. He's jealous to have all of us. He's jealous to have every part of our being. And so he says, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will dine with him and he with me. You have been invited into a dining relationship with Jesus Christ. It is awesome. And to, over, to, to experience that, We've got to overcome lukewarmness, apathy, indifference, being asleep, slumber. We've got to overcome this because the degree that we enter into this is determined by the hunger and the thirst we have within our heart. A little bit of hunger, a little bit of dining. A lot of hunger, a lot of dining. It's just the same way in the natural. When you're very, very hungry, you could, you could go to the buffet and eat everything on the buffet. When you have had a Thanksgiving meal and you go to the buffet, it doesn't sound good at all. If we are filled with the, with the pleasures of this world, if we are filled with the desire of other things and the cares of life, there's not much hunger left for Jesus, and therefore he gets our leftovers. Amen? But if we're hungry and we're thirsty for him, we can enter into this dining, communing relationship, this conversation. God wants to change even the way we pray. And a lot of times we come to God and we say, okay, we got this prayer list. Okay, I got to pray for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. 
And we, we fail to see that prayer is more of a conversation with the one we love. It's not so much, and again, I'm not saying you don't ask God for things and you don't ask God to do things. We obviously do all that. But God wants to bring us into this intimate, conversational intimacy where we're speaking to him, he's speaking to us. We're, it's this ongoing fellowship of communing and dining. You know, just even like you would eat, when you get together with friends and you dine together and you eat together, you unveil your heart, you share your heart, they share their heart, and you come together in this incredible bond of intimacy. It's the same way with the Lord. God wants to share his heart with you. God wants to share the deep things of his heart with you. God wants to say to you, you are my friend. You are my friend. It's incredible. So... That has been the invitation for 15 years that God has been speaking to us. Now, I want, you to sh I want to show a slide here, kind of the, the spectrum of I, where I think we are in this. I think we, you know, just to kind of explain this to you, a little engineering nerdiness here, but I, the, the Lord began speaking this to us in 2006 when no man came. I'm going to share that in a minute. But in 2006, confront, and very, sharing that very same word, if you will open the door of your heart to Jesus, he will come in and you will dine with him. He will open the door into the glory realm, Revelation 4.1. And so Noah began speaking that in, in 2006. And I think, you know, back, I can look back then, but 15 years ago and say, okay, you know, when he first spoke that, I'm like, we're not lukewarm. I'm like, come on, we're the charismatic church. We pray in the spirit. We've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We move in the gifts. We worship God. We love him, et cetera, et cetera. We're not really lukewarm. Come on, you're being a little, a little exaggerating here. Um, I don't really know how, how, you know how much we really are lukewarm. I look back 15 years and I was like, God, we were so lukewarm. <laughs> I mean, just, just think about the journey God's led us on. And so, you know, we were asleep, we were apathetic, and over time, God began to stir us, and God began to, you know, two, and I'll go through the dates in a minute, 2012, 2015, and I would probably say in 2021, we've made incredible strides in overcoming apathy and lukewarmness, but I want to say there is so much more that God wants to bring us into, and it's almost like it's almost like when you have an onion and you have the layers of the onion. When, when God first started speaking this to us in, two, in 2006, we were at the very first layer of the onion and he peeled that layer of the onion off and we said, okay, we've overcome lukewarmness. And, you know, God probably laughed at us and said, yeah, you've overcome one layer. There's like 10 layers left. But, you know, God deals with us little by little and progression by progression, layer by layer to deal with us in these things. And so I think now we, in 2021, this is probably where we are moving from Laodicea and Sardis to Philadelphia with the open door. And I think God is, is speaking to us again. There is another layer of lukewarmness and apathy I want to confront not because I'm mean and angry, but because I want to be in a continuous dining relationship with you. And that then as you experience that individually, as you come together corporately, I then will open a door into the throne room of heaven for Holy of Holies worship. And I will open a door into this community and nation and nations for effective, powerful ministry. Amen? It's making sense. So again, we, this is where we are, the spectrum of where we are. We have moved tremendously from Laodicea and Sardis, moving towards Philadelphia, which is a church of overcomers. God is interested more. And uh, as, we, as we come and do this individually, God will then add to it collectively. And the degree, this is a corporate mandate God's giving us. Let me just make sure we understand that. This is, it begins individually, but the height and the depth we go to is determined by our individual response. If we have 10% that go wholehearted after this, we'll have a 10% increase. If we have 50% that go wholehearted after this, we'll have a 50% increase. But I believe God is looking for 100% wholeheartedness, so we have a 100% increase. Amen? So it's a, it, it is a corporate invitation that begins on an individual level. The measure of our effectiveness in seeing the glory of God come and fill this, this house 
and open doors for ministry in greater degrees and greater measures hinges upon our individual response of us dining with Jesus. And that all hinges on us overcoming lukewarmness. And so Revelation 4.1, turn to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. It's interesting, right after John has this message from Jesus about opening the door of your heart to Jesus for dining with him, it's, it's interesting that almost immediately uh, John, it says, John says, after these things I looked and behold a door was standing open in heaven. Notice again, an open door. And this time the door is in heaven. Now, just don't mistake what I'm saying here. This was, when John's writing this, it was a literal experience he had. Some people use this to say it's talking about the rapture. It's, I don't believe it's talking about the rapture at all. It's talking about John's actual experience. He saw a door standing open in heaven. But I also believe in this context, God wants to apply this to our church. I believe he wants to apply it to many churches. I believe it's, I, in fact, I believe it is a, the word of the Lord for this hour for the global church. That, that God is speaking to the global church. You've got, for the hour you live in, you've got to have the glory realm. You have got to have the glory realm to, to survive the times we live in, the shakings that are coming, the darkness that is coming, the warfare that is increasing. We've got to have the glory realm of God. I think we're kind of m way more awake to what that looks like in 2021 than we were in 2006 after some of the shakings we've seen. But, but here John is, is writing and he says, Behold, a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said, Come up here. I believe that's what God is speaking to his church. Dine with me and come up here. Now, I'm talking spiritually speaking. I'm not saying that all of us are going to have these supernatural transportations to heaven. That's not what I'm applying it here. I'm just saying God is saying to us, come into the throne room in a spiritual way. And, and this would be applied corporately. Come into the throne room in a spiritual way to experience the glory of God and I will show you prophetically what's going to take place. And immediately I was in the spirit. Again, this is a spiritual reality God wants to bring into our corporate gathering a throne was standing in heaven. One was sitting on the throne. And so what I want to do now is I want to go through just a little bit of the history of how God has been speaking to us for like 15 years. Because the reason I want to do that is because I want us to see, okay, I mean, this has been such a significant thing God has been speaking, a significant thing God has been saying. In 2006, Noel Mann, who has since gone on to be with the Lord, came, and a lot of us know Noel, and he came, started coming in 1996, but in, in 2006, in fact, on November 26, 2006, Noel came and brought this very message to us, and the very idea of it was, if you will open the door of your heart, I will open the door to the glory realm of God so that you might have this access into the throne room of God. And he really, really confronted lukewarmness. And I, I look back at that message and I look at it and say, at the time you kind of think, okay, that's just a message. I look back at that 15 years later and I'm saying, that's, that's a major part of God's mandate to us as a corporate body is that's not something we just do once and say, okay, we've got it. No, it's something that's been unfolding and it's going to continue to unfold until the Lord comes back. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It is, a, it is a mandate for us that we have entered into to a degree, but there is so much more God wants to bring us into. And so, and then after he shared that, that word was, uh, that very day, there was a prophetic word released by Bob Jones and Paul Keith Davis that basically confirmed that word. And he said, this was the word, we are, offer, or we, are, we are being offered right now divine access to come up higher in God for a fresh revelation of his glory that will transform us and cause us to reflect his light. This is an abiding glory, and, and the abiding glory meaning it's a tabernacling of God 
his glory among us that will be entrusted to mature believers to initiate this next installment of heaven's blueprint, this portal remains open to the righteous. That was released the very same day Noel shared his message. And you know Noel, just seeing the way he was, you know, hallelujah, the way he did it. But it was so amazing. And I believe that is an ongoing invitation to us. It's not just like, oh, good message. Yeah, we, we, we repented. We had some deliverance. We move on. This is the invitation. This is the mandate God's given us. Part of the mandate God's given us. And I believe we probably have entered into it to a degree, but there is a much larger degree God wants to bring us into right now. And I believe the Lord is speaking to that to us right now. Is he saying this very same thing? Yes, you've come to a certain degree. You've overcome in certain ways. And you have tasted a little bit of the dining relationship and the glory relationship with me. But there is so much more for you to experience if you're hungry and you're thirsty. In 2008, and again, we see this unfolding, 2008, Dad was going to preach a message and he woke up with the phrase, pursue the glory realm. And this was on July 1st, 2008. On July the 6th, he preached the message, pursue the glory realm. And if you were to ask him what he talked about, he would probably have no idea. What do you talk about? I talked about pursue the, the glory realm. And so, and I was trying to say, do you have notes or whatever? You, you, and he couldn't find his notes. So we, and we don't even have a recording of it, but the, the message was pursue the glory realm, which I think corresponds to what God is speaking to us right now. Pursue the glory realm. Pers come up here, Revelation 4.1. It was a couple months later, Drew Kitchens, our worship leader, was driving down 75, and he gets behind a car, and he, you know, probably forgot the message, and, you know, he's driving down 75, and he sees this license plate that says July the 6th on it. And he's like, hmm, that's weird. I wonder if God's trying to speak to me about July the 6th. And so he goes through his, you know, goes through his day and works and, you know, does his whole eight-hour whatever routine on the way home, driving down 75, gets behind the exact same car, the exact same license plate, July the 6th. I mean, you cannot make that up. And then Drew's like, okay, I think God's speaking to me. Okay, what happened on July the 6th? And so anyway, he looked up and he realized that was the very day Dad preached the message, pursue the glory realm. And I think God was clearly, clearly speaking to us. And that's why I'm, I'm saying, let's, we don't move on. Sometimes we just think we move on from a message and not a good message or whatever. But part of this is God wanting to shape the DNA of this church, shape the DNA of the culture of this church, shape the DNA of the mission and the mandate of this church. And that being that, that a major aspect of what God has called us to is to pursue the glory realm of God. And again, I believe we've done that to a measure, but I'm saying there is way, way more God wants to give us. Amen. In 2011, Angie, my wife, had a dream, and in the dream she was in her parents' old house in their den, and she was teaching the middle schoolers, uh, the class, learning to hear God's voice, and in the dream, she's looking at her notes, and all of a sudden in her notes, she notices that there is a, an extra bullet point in the notes, and she looks down, and this bullet point is the word zenith. And then she looked at her notes, and it was as if the word zenith was written out as a definition, and the definition meant free flow. And so, anyway, from that, the word, the word zenith actually in the dictionary means the point of culmination, the peak, the high place, the highest place in the sky. And so what we believe, what I believe God is, has been saying to us, it all relates to this thing, pursue the glory realm. And I believe what God is saying is, is the free flow of the spirit, the free flow of the prophetic, the free flow of the song of the Lord that is going to open up the heavens for us. I think we tasted that some today and, and allow the glory of God to tabernacle here among us. That makes sense? And so 
That was in 2011. Again, common theme, God speaking over numbers of years. It's funny to me how just we can't seem to get off this theme of God speaking this to us. Then in, in 2012, Dad was, you know, we were doing in our old building, we had done some reconstruction and we sheetrocked over, oh, I forgot to mention in 2006, Noel had us do a prophetic act where we opened the door as a prophetic symbol to say, hey, you know, we're inviting you in. And then in 2012, Dad started, you know, we did the sheetrock, we sheetrocked over the door and Dad was feeling uneasy like, okay, I feel like we just, we neglected this prophetic act, almost like we, did, we just took it, didn't take it very serious. You know, back then I remember I was like, oh God, he's going to make us like open up. I mean, you know, basically like knock a hole in the wall, open the door up, but thankfully he didn't. But we, we again, um, dad was feeling uneasy about it. And then Doug, who runs the video, he had a vision in worship where Jesus was wanting to come in and, but there was something blocking, something hindering. And so again, the Lord had us back then in 2012 to reopen that door as a prophetic sign to say, Jesus, come in, come in. Um, now we're in, in 2015, and uh, it's, again, this theme God has given us. I had a dream where in the dream um, we were at our old building, and the, some really good friends of our family, the Turners, uh, Ken Turner, Josh Turner, and Aaron Turner were on the stage in the dream. And the next thing I realized was Aaron was on the keyboards playing. And the next thing I noticed was in the back of the building to the outside, this door was all of a sudden open to the outside. And behind that door was light and glory emanating out of it. And I knew that it was the same door we had opened, but it was the door here that had been projected there. And it was like God was saying two things in it. You open the door to the glory realm, and then I will open the door to the community, the nation, and the nations for impact. And so as I went through that, in terms of the interpretation, um, I think Ken Turner, just to say that the, the last name Turner is symbolic of the forerunner ministry of turning the hearts of the people back to the children and the children back to the fathers so that we would be a people prepared for the Lord. And so the fact that Ken was up there, Ken Turner, is obviously pointing to dad being the turner, the forerunner, the father. And then Aaron being up there was pointing to Aaron in terms of being this worship leader. Worship is the key that unlocks the door. It's the key of David, the tabernacle of David that unlocks the door for the glory to penetrate into the community. Josh, who was also a pastor uh, of River City Church, that it was as if God was saying to us, this is the key for you, like Joshua of old, to take the, your inheritance to take the land. It was like God was saying, if you open that door of glory um, to the glory realm and have that holy of holies throne room worship, then I will open a door for you that no man can shut to impact the nations. And we've seen it to a degree happen, but I believe God wants to do so much more in that arena. Um, and so then moving on, we, we come to, uh, it, was, it was dad, I can't even remember the year, of it, but dad had a message where, see, you thought I pay, didn't pay attention to you. Yeah, see, I probably remember more than you even remember. So anyway, so I'm kidding. But dad had a message. He said, I feel like we have been the church of Laodicea and Sardis, but God wants to make us the church of Philadelphia. And so dad shared that message, and I think it really summarized what my dream was um, in that, the dream I shared. And then in 2000, June of 2015, um, I, the Lord, I, I preached the message in 2015 that we are following on what dad has said, that we are like the church of Sardis, asleep, apathetic, indifferent. We are like the church of Laodicea, self-satisfied and lukewarm. But God wants to make us like the church of Philadelphia. That if we will open the door to Jesus, he will open the door in the heavenly realm so we can go higher into his glory. And he will open the door in the earth so we can fulfill our mission in this city and in this nation. Okay, so you still with me? So again, it's, it's amazing to me the, the similar themes God has been speaking. Now comes Alice 
who I believe God has really gifted in a, in a beautiful way in terms of prophetic gifting. In 2018, she has an experience where, uh, I'm just going to summarize it just for the sake of time. Um, I, I've got the notes so everybody can read through if they're interested. Where she is, I think, in, her, in prayer, and she has, uh, I guess, a visitation, some kind of a visitation of an angelic being. And the an angel said to her, and this was right at the time I was, I think right at the time I was about to preach on the new wineskin of worship God wants to bring to us in terms of pursuing the glory realm. And she had this, and in the dream, the angel said to her, who will come into my throne room? And it was right around the same time I was preaching about throne room worship, being a priesthood that ministers to the Lord. You know, we can, have, we can be a priesthood that has an outer court ministry, and there are a lot in the body of Christ that have an outer court ministry, but God is raising up a priesthood after God's heart who will have a ministry to God in the Holy of Holies. And it really confirmed that the timing of that was, was such confirmation and that God is saying to us, who will come into my throne room? And then she saw this, this man in this vision holding the earth with many colors. And th this man was saying to her in the, in the experience, come and I'm going to tell you about these things. It's really Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. Come into the throne room and then God's going to show us the things that are going to take place in the earth. Um, then I think a couple weeks later, Alice had another vision during worship. And in the vision, she saw, she was able to see into all of our bellies. Okay, so that's, that's a little, you know, if we, especially if it was around Thanksgiving, that's not good. But she was able to see into our bellies and she could see the measure of, of the spirit that was in us. And so obviously when she looked at me, it was completely full. I'm kidding. So. But she, she saw the measure, hopefully, hopefully you didn't see me and see it small, but she saw the measure of the Spirit of God that was within each individual, and she saw sometimes the measure of the Spirit of God in some was large and in others was small, and, but she realized that the measure of Christ in us is the measure or the degree that we are worshipers. And again, that was right along the same time when I was preaching about the new wineskin of worship in the old building, 2018. The reason I keep bringing this up is I keep saying, I, I believe there's, I, I mean, our worship right now is incredible, but I believe that God is just saying there is so much more that we can experience. Don't be satisfied with our current level. It, it, it's the measure of Christ in us that determines how much of a worshiper we are. Then, then she had another vision uh, of Elijah in the altar of incense, and, and she, was, she was, had a visitation. An angelic being came in and said to her, pray for the awakening of the bride nationwide. And so, anyway, she blew the trumpet, and she, she saw Elijah was coming near to the altar of incense. And that was right around the same time Dad had been really stirred that we've got to build an altar of incense to the Lord in this place. And, and so this altar of incense is a ministry. In fact, uh, turn, in your, turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 30. And, and Dad preached a whole series of messages on this, the altar of incense. You know, it relates to prayer and worship. It's really both that God wants to stir again within us. Verse 37, the incense will you, which you will make, you shall not make in the same proportions for yourselves. It shall be holy to you for the Lord. Notice that. What we, this altar of incense is not for ourselves. I thought it was interesting, too, that Drew, not knowing what I was going to say, um, picked the song about in, burning incense to the Lord. Is, is God is wanting us, God is wanting us to burn incense to the Lord that is not for ourselves. Our worship times are not so we can get chill bumps and feel good. Our worship times are for the Lord. Whether we feel it or not, most of the time we'll, we will feel it. But there will be times when we don't feel it. Our ministry, 
Our number one ministry in this place is not in the outer court. Our number one ministry is not outside to the people. Our ministry, what God is speaking here, is our ministry is like the sons of Zadok, Ezekiel 44, that they are like those who come near to me to minister to me in the Holy of Holies. That's what we have been invited into. It's as if the Lord is challenging us. Do you want an external ministry to the people or do you want an, a holy of holies, intimate ministry to the Lord himself? And that, that doesn't mean we don't have an external ministry because the sons of Zadok had an external ministry, but their external ministry came from their ministry to the Lord. As they ministered to the Lord, God then used them to speak what he was saying. That is what God has called this place to. God has called this house to be a holy of holies ministry to the Lord. And, you know, when you're ministering to the Lord in the holy of holies, you just can't get away with things you could get away with in the outer court. The mixture God allows in the holy place, he doesn't allow in the holy of holies. So if you wonder, okay, why are things being stirred up? Why, are all, why is all this stuff being stirred up? It's as if... God's surfacing so much. It's because God has called you to minister to him in the Holy of Holies. And self cannot go in to minister to him. Amen. So that now, this week, Alice, okay, I think she's finally recovered from the whole giving birth process here. And finally has got back into her prophetic ministry again. Alice, you need to keep giving us these words, all right? So I'm kidding with her, but... She had this word, she had, I thought it was very significant that in, uh, I'm going to call this Shekinah Takiah. She had this experience, this dream. She doesn't dream much, but she saw in this dream, um, sh she was under a huge rock and she saw a man walking back and forth. Uh, she didn't hear his voice, but she stopped to look what this guy was saying. As he drew closer, he looked at him or she looked at him closely. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchering what you're saying here. But she saw the writing on the rock that said, Shekinah Tekiah. And you're like, okay, she's like, well, I knew what Shekinah means. Shekinah means basically the glory of God. But I wasn't really sure what Tekiah meant. Tekiah, and she looked it up, Tekiah means that it is the long blast of a shofar that is sounded during the fall festivals of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And so she's like, I don't really know what this means. Um, you know, she sent it to me. I was like, okay, I think I know what it means. I think what God's saying is the blasting of the shofar, the sounds of the fall festivals, the feast of ta that prepare the way for the feast of tabernacles, Shekinah Tekiah, God is speaking again about pursue the glory realm. What God is looking for in the end time church is this parallel this picture of abiding glory that God wants to come and tabernacle among us with his glory and that he would fill this house with his glory Shekinah Tekiah that God would fill the house of God with his glory again confirmation of pursue the glory realm I'm going to move on to just a recent thing to me that, that really helped stir all of this up. I don't know how many of you have heard Mike Bickle's encounter that he had on April 2nd, 2021, but I've been listening to Mike Bickle for, since 1996, since there were cassette tapes. So those who are under 40, you probably don't even know what a cassette tape is. What a cassette tape is is this little thing. You put it into this thing in your car and it plays. You didn't have internet back then. You, did, you didn't even have CDs back then. You had tapes. And so I've been listening to Mike Bickle since there were tapes. And so every time he would speak, we would get these tapes and we would, oh, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I've been listening to him for since 1996, so 20 plus years. I've never ever heard, and I've listened to, I mean, I, I mean so many messages he's spoken over the years. I've never heard him say this once. I don't know if he has, but I have never heard, and I've listened to many messages. But on April 2nd, 2021, he, was, um, he spoke about this encounter he had on March the 3rd, 2021, where he was praying very, the very same thing I'm talking about. Lord, would you, in Kansas City, would you 
uh, stir up our hearts as a local community so that we could overcome lukewarmness, so that we could open the heart, our hearts to Jesus and dine with you. And as he's praying this prayer, all of a sudden, and, and he was saying, I'll send the link out so you can watch it. All of a sudden he's praying. He doesn't get many experiences. Um, all of a sudden he's praying and this, this vision comes on the walls like a movie and he sees an open door, and behind the door is the glory of God radiating out behind that open door. And the word of the Lord that he spoke was, we are being invited to open the door of our heart to Jesus. And if we open the door of our heart to Jesus, we can then, he will open the door to us for glory. When I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh. That is what God has been speaking to us for 15 years. And he said in that message, he said that this is not only an invitation for us, it's an invitation to the global body of Christ. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Well, let's turn back to uh, Revelation chapter 3. I want, us to see, I want us to see this one more time. Just receive this for yourself when I read it, okay? Don't try to defend yourself and say, oh, I'm not really that lukewarm. All of us, listen, all of us have degrees of lukewarmness. We, okay, just to encourage you, we're going to struggle with lukewarmness until we die, okay? It is going to be a struggle that we are going to fight our entire lives. So don't feel like, oh, God, I've... all of us struggle with lukewarmness, all of us have pockets and areas in us where we're, we are self-satisfied, where we don't hunger for God like we should. And so receive this here as a word to you. Behold, I stand at your door and I knock. If you hear that knock and you open the door of your heart, I will come into you and dine with you and he with and you with me. Just just where you're at right now, just close your eyes. And just hear the Lord say to you, my beloved and my friend, I'm calling you to my heart. I'm calling you to dine with me. I'm calling you to the table of the Lord to experience communion with my Father, with me, and with the Spirit. If you will open the door of your heart, I will bring you into the fellowship of the Trinity, the fellowship of the Godhead, and you can have an abiding conversation with me that never ends and will only increase into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I will give you a throne to sit on, and you will rule the nations with me, both in the millennial kingdom and throughout the eternal ages. Amen. That's not the end of the message, but receive that. This is, this is way bigger than what God is speaking to us. This is something God is speaking globally to the church right now. There is a trumpet blast. He is, he is blowing a trumpet in Zion right now. Like her word, Alice's word, Shekinah Tekiah, the shofar blast is sounding and God is saying, I am coming to the church and I am coming to bring my glory and my glory will tabernacle among you. Amen. And it hinges on us opening the door of our hearts to him. And so in this message, Mike Bickle was sharing of an encounter he had in 1982 where he heard the Lord speak audibly and the Lord said, I'm changing the understanding and the expression of Christianity in the earth in one generation. And so I've listened to Mike Bickle for, forever. I've never, ever, ever heard him say this until this time 
that he had so often thought the changing of the expression of Christianity was an external thing, but he said in this message for the first time, I'd ever heard him, no, I realize then it is an internal thing that God's doing and the in internal flows into the external. It's the very same thing Terry Bennett said in his encounter with the Lord when he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, I am releasing a movement in the earth. It is an internal movement that's leading to a holy of holies relationship with me. This is all, everything, this is all synonymous. And so I just want to say, this is something, this is what God's saying to us. I'm convinced he's saying it to, to us. He's been saying it for 15 years, but he's saying it to the global body of Christ in the hour we live in, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot survive what's coming into the earth without this key. This is the key of David that opens and shuts doors. And so I say this, and, you know, I, I think I praise God that we are such worshipers, but God wants to bring us even to a greater level, and that greater level of worship does not come on Sunday mornings. It comes Monday through Saturday when we individually are in the secret place with the Lord, dining with Him. And then as we dine with Him individually, we come together corporately as living stones fit together. And as we do that, we then experience the Shekinah glory of God abiding and tabernacling here among us as His glory realm comes. We haven't seen anything yet. It is awesome what God wants to do. That's part of the reason we're encountering tremendous warfare. The devil does not want the glory of God in his house. But I'm telling you, the glory of God's coming to his house. And so as we bring this message to a close, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this deeper in, a, in a, some other messages here because God just wants to stay on this theme for a while but I just want us to just say yes again to the Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. Amen. I want to pray. Father, I just ask you right now that you would stir our hearts, Lord, for a fresh Holy Spirit baptism. Of, of this, Lord, thank you that you're speaking this. This is incredible what you're speaking. It's not just us. It's, you are speaking it to us, but it is global. Of the move of God you want to bring in this internal holy of holies relationship. Father, I ask you that we would, you would confront. Just give God permission right now to confront the lukewarmness in your heart. I tell you what, God is jealous for you. He is so jealous for you. He's so jealous for every part of you that there would not be one part of you that is, that is not his. He wants all of you on the inside of you. His jealousy wants to come and confront lukewarmness, apathy, indifference. So Lord, just, just tell the Lord, you have an invitation. You have an invitation to confront this in me. I say this, I say this to you, Lord, as we say it to you together. You have an invitation to confront lukewarmness in me. Amen.